There is nothing greater than when the Holy Spirit pierces the soul and fills one with love, joy, peace, wisdom, and truth. The Holy Spirit, when we believe Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and we repent of our sins, and when the Father sends the Holy Spirit to live in us because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, when this happens and he pierces the soul, we are filled with uh, ecstasy that we have never even experienced. We are filled with excitement and we are filled with new love and we see the world and things differently than we once did. And there is nothing greater than being filled with the Holy Spirit. Because when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we're filled with truth and life and love. And then through that, we feel joy and peace and excitement, even in the midst of sorrowful situations. That's not to say we're always going to be in a perfect state of peace and joy. But the reality is, wherever the Holy Spirit is, there is freedom. And when there is freedom from sin, when we are covered by the blood of Christ, we must continue to remind ourselves that it is nothing that we have done for our salvation, but it is only by Christ Almighty. And when we are covered by Christ's blood, by, by his atoning sacrifice that he did over 2,000 plus years ago, we can walk in freedom and victory. And we don't have to go back to our old ways. Our old ways are in our past. They are no longer a part of us. They no longer are our identity. Whatever they were, they are no longer us because when we have the Holy Spirit, we should see transformative power. We are going to see change from genuine conversion because that is what happens when we are truly saved. When we are truly saved, we are truly changed. And people are going to notice that change. It's going to bother some people. It's going to bother some of our old friends that we used to hang out with. They're going to say, something's different with you. And some may enter into the faith by that way. And then others might notice the change. And they're not going to want to uh, know what you have. They're not going to care because they would rather, uh, because men love darkness rather than light. That's just the truth, but it is those who hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and believe in Jesus Christ and then receive the Holy Spirit who are going to be children of the light because Christ is, is life and the life is light and God is light. He is both light and life and light is where truth is, where it can be found. Light casts out darkness. Life is true fulfillment. It's eternity with uh, God Almighty. It's being in a living relationship with him and becoming one with him, not one in the sense where we become part of the Trinity, but we become one in perfect peace and harmony in heaven and with him, hearing his voice, knowing him more, living with him, and not living in our sin or darkness or the past of our fleshly ways, carnal motives, and the like. But we become one as a family, as, chi as children of God. We become one with the family of God, and we become uh, heirs to the throne. Um, because Christ said in his Gospels that we are going to uh, become heirs with him, uh, we're going to rule and reign with him. Ultimately, he will be above us all. We are at, by no means equal with him from when we go into heaven, but there will be different levels based upon how we lived our life and continued to seek the Lord and walked in a repentant lifestyle and, and truly desired to know God. There will be different levels by which we are on the hierarchical scale and some people may disagree with that but the reality is someone who is saved and for 30 years just takes their faith as whatever uh, and they're truly born again but they don't really have this urge to want to know god more daily and daily they are not at all going to have the same uh level in in heaven as far um, everyone's going to get uh a cup as Norman Geisler says, everyone's going to get a cup, uh, but the cu and everyone's cup is going to overflow, but not everyone's cup is going to be the same size. So that person who was truly born again but didn't really seek God in this life for 30 years is most certainly not going to get the same rewards or the same uh, stature, so to speak, as uh, Paul the Apostle. But obviously, all of us are just going to cast the crowns back, our rewards back, and say, no, no, no. It was not us, Lord Jesus, and you know this. It was only you. And that is the type of life that we should be living. But 
It is this type of life that is empowered by the Holy Spirit. And so long as we allow the Holy Spirit to come to do what he was sent to do, we're going to live in true life and in, in visible light. And then that light and that true life is going to be manifested throughout our life to the world because people are going to notice a difference and they're going to say, I want that. I want to be able to have exactly what that person has. They're different. I don't know why, but I need to get to know what it is that has happened with them. And then that's when it, uh, the doors open to be able to share the gospel. Because the Holy Spirit desires to give us all that he is, all that he has, and all that he uh, was sent to do in and through us. But we have to be willing to humble ourselves. We have to be willing to repent of sin. And we have to be willing to continually to seek the Lord's will. Because if we're not doing any of these, then we are slowly fading into old ways and old habits. And we're not going to see the true victory that God wants. So if we're saved by the blood, we believe Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. And we are now covered by uh, his atoning sacrifice that he did over 2,000 plus years ago. May we walk in that victory and know that we are no longer our past or what we've done, but we are who God says we are. And those in Christ, there is therefore now no condemnation. We have a promised eternity with the Lord, and we need to press on and fight the battle, not just in the physical realm, but in the spiritual realm, and be in a state of constant prayer. Because as Leonard Ravenhill says, said one time, he said, A praying man stops sinning, a sinning man stops praying. So may we be praying men and women, constantly living in a state of prayer, just talking with the Lord throughout the day, thanking Him as things come about. And through that, may sin continue to drift from us, and may our progressive road be one where we look back 5, 10, 20 years from now and say, Lord, you have done a miracle because that's what it's all about. It's all about knowing God. It's all about giving God the glory. It's all about walking in the will of God. And it's all about showing God. And these are the four pillars of the faith. And if we are doing them, then we are going to have a very blessed arrival once in eternity. And Christ is going to see that we were truly sold out for him no matter the cost. We were sold out for him, and that is going to be evident based upon how much we did not suppress the Holy Spirit within, but we allowed his manifestation to come to full fruition, and through that we experienced the blessings of God uh, in this life. Because we're going to receive blessings in heaven, we're going to see things that we've never even seen that are going to be beautiful and glorious and magnificent, but we can experience heaven on earth now if we have the Holy Spirit within, because the kingdom of God lies within, and the kingdom of God is the Holy Spirit, and it is when the Holy Spirit covers the soul of a man who has repented and believed in Jesus that is destined for eternity. So may we give thanks to the triune God who loves us, who is calling us, who desires to know us, and may we simply deny ourselves and enter into the faith and receive the Holy Spirit and allow him to do what he was sent to do.